Let's build it. Whoa. So here's what we're going to be able to do by the end of this episode. Now, the first rule of business, we need somewhere to actually place our little baby cactus. I'll create a circle with 12 vertices and start positioning it onto the hood of our vehicle. Now, the size of this is going to determine the size of our plant. So size it wisely. I'll give the pot a bit of a taper and extrude upwards. From that extrusion, I will inset and push the face ring outwards, saving me a couple keystrokes from doing it the extrusion way. I'll go ahead and close the bottom out with an end gone face, and then remove the top end gone since we're not going to be seeing it anyways. Now I choose to use the bevel subsurf combo for this piece. However, because it's so simple, you could opt to just quickly bevel the sides and add a subsurf on top instead. Regardless of however you do it, we want to make sure that we add some topology for smoother normals and crisp edges across the asset. Let's shade it smooth, give it a little bit of extra height, go ahead and flip its normals if we're having an issue, and I'd say we've got ourselves a pretty good pot. However, our pot is nothing without dirt. For what I want to do, using a plane is actually going to be the best bet. Scale it down and bring it up to an appropriate height. I'm going to use a subsurf to round it out like the pot, which is going to be far easier to use than an initial circle mesh. Add a displacement modifier onto it, and let's call it dirt. We'll swap into our textures tab and change it to be a clouds texture. This is going to be our dirt information, although it might need some extra subdivisions. Once those are added, we can play with the displacement intensity and texture size to get something that looks dirty. Now it's time for our cactus. I'm going to use a circle mesh again, but this time let's use eight vertices instead. Scale it down and fit it into your pot as such. I'll extrude it up one long stretch and then continue to extrude upwards and inwards for about two more stretches. I wanna make sure the top is somewhat rounded out, even though we are going to be handling that with our subsurf modifier. For the gaping hole in the top of our mesh, select the edge ring and under face, we can use the grid fill tool to close it off easily. Finally, let's add our bevel subsurf combo again using the weight method for the bevel modifier. I want to select each edge loop that runs down the sides of the succulent without getting those top edges. Let's set their weight to 0.1. This will sharpen out those edges and give it that hardened look. I'll also select the top ring and make it 0.6 weighting so that it's nice and smoothed out. I'll also add another edge loop in the center to help equally distribute our polygons. Well, that's a cactus if I've ever seen one. Now, before we get to the spikes, there is a bit of setup required, but trust me, it's worth it. I'm going to select one stretch of these edges and duplicate them, then separating them into their own mesh. Now we have this run of vertices, which I'm going to convert into a curve. This will be the guide for our little spikes. Let's add a lattice modifier onto both the curve and the cactus, and then go ahead and start blocking in our lattice size. Again, make sure to tightly surround your assets with the lattice in object mode, not edit mode. Add this lattice to each of the modifiers, and now we have a fully flexible cactus manipulator. Give the lattice an extra handle or two and play around with it to get the shape you like. So now we can go and add our spikes. This part is important. Make sure the curve's origin is in the center of the cactus and that your 3D cursor is at that origin. I wanna create a cylinder with an origin in the same exact spot. With the cylinder in edit mode, I'm going to move it up vertically by one whole unit so that it sits on top of the origin. With my transformation pivot set to 3D cursor, I can now scale it down safely knowing that it will not leave the position. I'm going to try and shape it into a bit of a spiky shape. However, I don't want it to come to a point since it can be kind of difficult to shade that correctly. With our spike, let's add an array modifier and a curve modifier. For our curve, let's select the curve we had made from our cactus. I'll also set the fit type of the array to be fit curve. Notice that our array cuts in too early onto our mesh because it's actually still interpreting the curve from before the lattice modifier. Select the curve 
And in the lattice modifier, you can select this apply on spline button to use this effect in the modifiers of the spike. Now everything should update appropriately and I can scale our spike to however I want. We can also change the gap in the array mod, which I'll set to 2.5. However, we will notice the spikes are still floating a little bit. I'm just going to edit the curve using proportional editing to slide it in a little closer to the cactus mesh and everything should be fine. And because everything has been set up in this way, all you have to do is manipulate our lattice and everything should just automatically update accordingly. Man, I love modifiers. With that all set up, let's quickly shade our spike a little bit better since they kind of suck out of the box. First thing we can do is remove the bottom face since we aren't going to be seeing it anyways. No need for a bevel modifier this time. Let's just manually bevel the tops of these and also add some loop cuts to the faces to eliminate those weird shading triangles. Let's continue the chain of modifiers we have going on here to place more spikes around our cactus. First, we are going to need an empty. Next, let's add another array mod, but this time we are going to use it to circularize our spikes. We'll use object offset, making sure to select the empty object. Now I can rotate the empty on the Z axis 45 degrees and crank our array modifier up to eight to get the spikes covering our entire model, all by modeling and scaling one simple spike model. I can even move the spike in edit mode along the X axis to give it a bit of an offset and it's still all going to work with our lattice. However, something is still missing. Our little fella needs a hat. We don't want him to get sunburnt, right? Now, if you want to know more about making hats, I've got an entire Let's Build It episode on doing exactly that, so check it out in the card up top. For this hat, I didn't do anything special. I started with a circle, did some extrusions and insets to get a general shape for the basic block out, and then went full subsurf mode on it. I decided to manually bevel out some of the edges, considering it would have taken far more effort to set up a modifier for it. Notice though that when I move the lattice, the hat just floats there, right? Yeah, we're going to need to fix that. Go ahead and select the top ring on the cactus, which is where we want the hat to ideally sit. Create a new vertex group for that ring and call it whatever you want. Make sure you actually assign the vertices to that group though. On the hat, let's go and add a copy location object constraint. Select the cactus and you will notice that we can actually target a vertex group specifically. Select the group we just made and now when we move our lattice, the hat should follow. Finally, let's parent everything to our pot. Make sure to keep transforms. From there, let's parent our pot to the body of the car, which we animated in the previous episode. Now when we go ahead and play our animation, our little spiky boy comes along for the ride. Well, that's going to be it for our time together in this episode. Thank you to everyone that voted on our Baby Cactus for this episode, and make sure to check the description below for the link to our next poll item. As well, free CG Cookie members can snag the working files for the project as it continues to develop up on the CG Cookie site, link down below. As always, I've been Chunk, this has been Let's Build It in Blender, later skater. So I dropped my cactus the other day and uh, the worst part was I caught it. So what did one cactus say to the other cactus? Looking sharp. Oh, stop it, you.